I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! You got space, man, huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hey, what's up, everyone? You're watching Season 5 of Wrestle Rock Podcast. I'm your host, Nostradamus, and I host this episode with my colleague, my longtime best friend, Johnny D. Yes, How are you doing? Uh, I'm going super great. Uh, it's always a pleasure uh, me too. Uh, to do this wonderful project with you. We are on the Season 5 of the Wrestle Rock Podcast, and we have none other than a former... Uh, ECW, 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 yes, sir. ECW original. Yeah. He also uh, have been involved in professional wrestling for over uh, decades. Oh yeah. Uh, he wrestled uh, for WWE and WWF, of course, yeah. and then the next generation as um, uh, the Portuguese man of war, uh, Aldo Mancho. Oh yeah, Ladies remember and that. gentlemen, give it up for Mister Justin Credible. What's As up, guys? Yes. Uh, How are you? We, yes, we're Fine. going super great. And we know that you are extremely busy with uh, wrestling con and stuff like that. And we we are so very, very grateful that you can accept uh, this uh, invite with us. So we're going forward with uh, some questions. So go ahead, my friend. Okay, I started. Ever. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, can I call you Peter? You can call me whatever you want, brother. That's fine. That's cool, man. All right. Okay, Peter. Uh, you were trained by the Hart family at the Art Dungeon in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, can you tell us about your experience uh, there? Sure. Um, I went. Uh, I went to Calgary in 1992, uh, the summer of 1992, to train to be a pro wrestler, um, and uh, I was very lucky, um, of course, to, to get to go, you know, to Calgary to, to train with one of the greatest wrestling families ever really? uh, in the history of the wrestling business, the Hearts, um, Keith Hart, Bruce Hart. They were the ones running the camp at the time. And I also um, got a, the pleasure of getting to know Lance Storm and Chris Jericho because they were there the year prior in 1991. Yeah, Training oh, okay. under the same school, so they would come and uh, Lance actually helped teach a lot of the camp. Nice. So, um, those were the early days of kind of getting to know Lance Storm, and then later on, we formed the tag team, the Impact Players, oh, yeah. um, which was very successful. Uh, one of my favorite parts of my career. Um, so yeah, it was uh, it was a wonderful experience. It was a very hard camp. I mean, the hearts were very imagine. tough on you, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but still, it was it was a, it was a great opportunity, and uh, I was I was very lucky, very blessed. And uh, between you and me, my friend, Stu Art loves stretching people, so uh, <laughs> you're probably uh, uh, a taste of his um, of this kind of uh, of stuff. So <laughs> a little, not too much, not too much. Not, By not the time much. I had gotten there, Stu was not. He didn't. He didn't come around. Okay. So I did. I did get to meet him, but I never. Thank God. I never got to, uh, <laughs> you know, I never, I never made it into the real dungeon. Put it that way. So. <laughs> okay, cool. And we remember in uh, 1992, uh, your first wrestling match uh, was in the Canadian Rocky Mountain Wrestling Promotion yeah. uh, with uh, Chris Jericho in Calgary. So yep. uh, we would like to hear you about this first uh, experience. Um, well. When I when I finished training in the summer of '92, um, the promoter, the guys that ran the camp, there were it was more than the Hearts. They had a partner. Uh, his name was okay. Ed Langley. He helped, okay. you know, he helped the Hearts, and uh, he was starting a promotion called Rocky Mountain Pro Wrestling. Mm -hmm. And um, and he offered me. He goes, you know, I can't pay you. You could come and stay with us for free, okay. um, but you know, you could. Uh, we're running every Friday night. Um, at this place it was right across the street from the uh, saddle dome in okay. calgary the famous uh, saddle dome the big building yeah. there where wwe yeah. runs their shows 
and it's called Victoria Park Community Center. I'll never forget it. And um, okay. that's where I had my first 10 matches. Um, nice. You know, I put up the ring. I took it down. I didn't make any money. But uh, still, it allowed me to, uh, in my first 10 matches, I got to work with Lance Storm. I got to work with Chris Jericho. I got to work with, uh, remember Jerry Morrow, famous Canadian wrestler? I don't know. I don't know. He was an old school guy. He was famous yeah. in New Japan, but a lot of those okay. New Japan, Calgary guys. Okay. So anyways, long story short, I got to work with a lot of great people okay. for my first uh, couple of months in the business. And uh, after that, towards the end, around Christmas time of 1992, um, when I ran out of money and I was I was starving, I had to get back home. Um, and uh, that's when I came back to, uh, I live in Connecticut uh, okay. in the States. So I came back home and, uh, you know, just started uh, to try to make uh, my way in pro wrestling uh, here in the States. Nice. Okay. In the mid-90s uh, on WWE Raw, if I remember, your first match was against the total package Lex Luger. That's right. Yeah. Wow. You're good, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah. As PJ Walter, if yep. my memory is good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. That was, that was my first time. And the way I got that, It was very funny. Um, you know, we didn't have the, there was no internet back in the day. You yeah. know, uh, I didn't know a lot of people. I didn't know about the independents because independent wrestling wasn't as big then as it is today. Um, so I remember WWE or WWF at the time had a house show uh, about 30 minutes from uh, where I live. And, uh, you know, I, I, I went to the show with my bag, like, you know, just a, a Mark Jabroni. Uh, <laughs> And I went backstage and I, you know, I met, remember Tony Gurria and Rene Goulet? Yeah. Yeah. They were, the, yes. they were the agents or, you know, what they call producers today. Yeah. And, well, uh, Martin, I said, oh, sir, uh, you know, I introduced myself. I said I was trained by the hearts um, and Brett was on the show. And I think Owen was on the show as well. But I was like, you know, uh, they trained me. I'm just here. If you need somebody, I brought my bag. Of course, they never need anybody. But anyways, I was just trying to make a connection. Long story short, at the end of the day, of course, I saw the show. They didn't need anybody. Uh, I went to thank him for hospitality, letting me watch the show backstage and stuff. And uh, Tony Gurria said to me, he goes, um, well, uh, you know, come. we might need some guys for this new show that we're starting called Monday Night Raw yeah. in Manhattan. And mm -hmm. we'll need some guys that. like, you know, to go do jobs. And uh, I was 19 years old. I was like, of course, right. you know, it's a, it's an opportunity. Right. So, um And that's when I, you know, went down there and wrestled Lex Luger for my first match. I was so young and so not ready, but still, it was a great experience, um, you know. And uh, that's how I did well enough that they asked me back, and they kept asking me back. And um, that's kind of how the ball got rolling. And we would like to hear you about uh, the transition of P.G. Walker to uh, Aldo Montoya. So how did you change your name? It's this is a good story, and I'll try to get through it quickly. Um, I was I lived in Waterbury, Connecticut. Uh, the only reason that matters is I live 45 miles, uh, 45 minutes from Stamford, where okay. the WWE has the office. Yeah, oh, yeah, and um, and I, I had made connections with Tony Gurria, and he said, mm -hmm. you know, if you want, we need somebody to go up and train with The Undertaker. And a new guy coming in uh, named Brian Lee. This was 1994 when they were going to do the double undertakers. Yeah. So oh, basically okay, yeah. they wanted somebody to go in and just kind of bump around for Brian Lee yeah. and to work with Mark. So they're, you know, to teach him how to do the undertaker. Uh, so I work with them all week. You know, I'm getting paid very well, very happy. But the last day of the, of the tape of the, of the week of training, Vince McMahon and Pat Patterson come down to watch and it was a full dress rehearsal uh you know brian lee had the whole the makeup the suit you know the hair everything and um i was going to work with mar uh, with brian at the tv taping because mm -hmm. they were going to debut it so they vince wanted this really you know um so we go through it vince is happy everyone's happy and then uh pat patterson uh, starts talking to me gets in the ring you know i'm just getting dressed and you know getting my regular clothes on and pat's like You know, you look good out there, kid. Uh, you know, who trained you? And I was like, well, sir, I was trained by the hearts. And he kind of, ah, okay, wow. Um, and, uh, you know, he keeps talking to me. He goes, um, what nationality are you? And I said, well, sir, I'm Portuguese. And all of a sudden, Pat, you know, hey, Vince, 
this kid Portuguese, you know, and Vince kind of popped. And I was like, okay, what's it about Portuguese? <laughs> and he kept going on and on. He goes, do you speak it? I said, yes, sir, I do. And he pops again. The whole time they were looking for a Portuguese wrestler to fit the character. Aldo Montoya was made before me. I was the one that kind of was in the right place at the right time with the right nationality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I could speak Portuguese to go and do the gimmick so, because they were business was down in the States and they were trying to go overseas. So they, they wanted somebody uh, to fit that character. And uh, again, uh, right place at the right time, you know. Exactly. And uh, uh, what? OK, yes. uh, did you prefer your first run at the WWE as Aldo Montoya or your second run in the stable X Factor, including X Pac and Albert? Uh, AKA Honestly. Honestly, my first one is Aldo, and I'll only the only reason why, uh, although I you know I was in more pay per views, I got to work uh, opening match at WrestleMania 17, and I loved uh, working with Sean uh, X Pac. Don't get me wrong, you stand as Aldo, yeah. But Aldo was it was such a great time in the business. Um, I learned so much, and I got to be there to work with stone cold when he was even before he was stone cold yeah, when he was yeah. the ringmaster i got to yeah. see rock come up i got to be there with this electric magic thing happening um before it happened you know and just being yeah. there was just a great i just have very good memories of of the aldo days i had good memories in the x factor days but it wasn't i'd already been there kind of done that mm -hmm. and you know but i i would say the aldo days for sure it was just more fun mm -hmm. you know And we can compare uh, two different uh, eras. So, uh, of course, yes, yeah. very, yeah, very different. And um, I don't know if it's uh, just a rumor, but uh, is it true that uh, the late Scott Hall was uh, one of your uh, mentor in WWE? Who's this? Scott Hall. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, very much so, yeah. Oh yeah, he was. Uh, Scott and I used to travel together. Uh, we we were very good friends, and uh, yes. yeah, he he helped me out a lot. He taught me a lot in the beginning, you know. Uh, good and he taught me a lot of good and a lot of bad too. <laughs> so uh, okay. yeah, it was definitely. Uh, it is yeah, what it is. Running with Scott Hall <laughs> for sure. We didn't talk about your third run uh, at EC, uh, on WWE. Uh, the other one, yeah. Yeah, ECW brand. Uh, what is your opinion about the field of ECW and WWE? It was, uh, again, you know, um, you get a call and they're offering you a contract. You're going to mm -hmm. take it. But I think we all knew from the very beginning it wasn't going to it wasn't going to work and it wasn't going to last very long. Um, but again, you know, what are you going to do? You know, you're going to say yes and you're going to try the best you can and. It was just a shame because they took an ECW character who was a two-time world tag team champion, a you know heavyweight champion of the world, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, and made me into a job guy for the fake ECW it was an insult, you know, and uh, it, it just broke my heart. And uh, I didn't. At the end of the day, I ended up quitting before 2007. Uh, actually, I, I quit in uh, late 2006. Okay. I didn't want to. I didn't want anything to do with it after that. And I never thought of quitting the WWE. But the money wasn't great at all. And uh, to to further turn tarnish my character and make myself look bad uh, for shitty money wasn't worth it. Okay. And we are uh, totally agree about uh, with your um, opinion opinion because when we discussed with uh, older ECW talent. As uh, Todd Gordon, of course, W. Anderson, C. W. Anderson, uh, Jazz, Sabu, uh, Sabu uh, Chili Willy, and, and yeah, yeah. name it. Uh, we discovered that the ECW talent was uh, a family, and yes. that was when the uh, <laughs> the uh, WWE are the uh, uh, but are the uh, uh, what the WWE made uh, the acquisition of ECW. Uh, every people uh, said that that was very different and right. that's uh, a different uh, uh, mentality. So, yeah, uh, it was a different vibe. It was a different, yeah, exactly. different thing. Yeah, it wasn't. They forgot to capture what made ECW great. Um, and it was that entire, like you said, that family vibe, that all for one, one for all kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But the yeah. two the two pay-per-views one night stand were good. The, the one night stands were good, yes. 
2005, 2006 were good. Very good. Oh, yeah. Well, because if, if, if Vince McMahon would have just let Paul Heyman do what Paul Heyman does the, uh, with his the players. Presence, the spirit of the the original ECW right. was If you would have just let us, yeah, yeah, and bring in guys like CM Punk and maybe other guys, yeah. you know, not bring in guys like the vampire guy and a bunch of other uh, guys that did not belong, you know, Bobby uh, Lashley, even though Bobby yeah. Lashley is a great superstar, for ECW, just the way they did ECW was, you know, it was not what ECW was, you know? No, exactly. Uh, we know that you have a good, um, you had a really good friendship with uh, Chris Candido, the late. I did, yes. Chris Candido. So how did you deal with uh, Chris ex-girlfriend? bad reputation backstage and juicy stories and stuff like that so oh yeah i mean it was <laughs> uh it was crazy only because like i i think we all felt everybody that was around felt that everybody knew what she was doing except chris which yeah. is very sad it's like oh, it's having a brother sad. of yours like and you're like you know he he doesn't he had to have known but i don't i just don't think he wanted yeah. to see it, you know and you couldn't he tell loved, him, you know just it was a, so much yeah it was a crazy situation and uh and and, and the sad thing is that everybody made fun of chris for that yeah. not really to his face because everybody respected his work but he was being made a fool by her she was sleeping around with everybody and still going home with him it was just a bad vibe hey it's always i always say uh, never have a girlfriend or a boyfriend in the business. It always ends up bad, in my opinion. All right. And uh, that's what right. that's you know. But it, it is what it is. And uh, you know, she's just she was a bad person. She's you know, I know she she's gonna be in jail for a very long time after yeah. what happened. But yeah. uh, you know, it, it's just it's it's too bad. It's a shame. It's a shame all around. It's a tragedy. It sucks. Yeah. But Chris deserved better for sure. Yeah, of course. Okay, uh, in ECW or in your entire career, did you prefer to wrestle uh, in single or in team? Oh, singles for sure, absolutely. I, I, the only, I think, again, the only reason the Impact players worked so well was because Lance really trained me too. You know what I mean? Like he, yeah. Oh, yeah. I trusted him completely. Uh, we were great friends. He was one of my first friends in the business. Um, so, I mean, uh, I knew his wife. He knew my wife. We were very close. And I could trust him as a brother, 100%. And we were totally opposites. You know, Lance Storm is straight edge, very, you know, athletic, takes care of business, almost like a military guy. <laughs> and I'm kind of the rock and roll, punk rock, crazy guy. Um but together we were, I was, I was everything he was not, and he was everything I was not. So together we were almost like perfect, perfect yeah. almost like the anvil and Bret Hart. Mm -hmm. They were different, exactly. but they worked yeah. good together. And that's what the impact players were. We were different, but worked well together. And during your uh, impact player run, uh, you beat Mike Awesome, Tommy Dreamer, Raven to become a two-time ECW Tag Team Champion with Lance Storm as the Impact player, of course. <laughs> do you consider this accomplishment your best in career? Or do you think winning the uh, WWE Hardcore Championship uh, eight times was oh, no. better? Definitely. Uh, I would say I, I'll, I'll rate it. I would say the world title definitely the most important because... Uh, I remember looking at a magazine in 2000, and this is the height of the wrestling business. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, WCW was still had Nitro, Raw was doing amazing numbers, and ECW was still on TNN doing good. And there was like the top 10 uh, for that month or whatever, mm -hmm. or the, the, you know how they do the PWI 500? I was like, I'm number like five or six because I'm the world champion. And that's like, to me, I was one of the best in the world at that moment in time as the world champion. And to me, it showed that Paul had faith in me to carry the company to main event pay-per-views. And it's hard if you've ever, A, if you've ever main evented any show, is hard. But ECW, uh, to main event an ECW pay-per-view and go on last is even crazier because you have 
Sabu and damn, like you're literally going, you know, balls, yeah. axle, tables, fires. Oh, that was a stack, uh, <laughs> right? So to go out there and have like two and a half, three hours wow. of show and be able to put on a, a good match is a lot of pressure. So Paul believed in me, and I feel I delivered. And you know, everybody else, you know, always gives me good. You know, the rated the reviews were always good for me. So I was very, very honored uh, by that and happy with that. But and then of course I would still put the tag team title run above the hardcore. The hardcore title to me was a bit of a joke, but still, I uh, you could say I won a WWE title, but, you know, it was more of a joke, you know. Uh, just for ending, uh, as usual, uh, I, I will give you a couple of names in with a short words. Uh, sure. Tell me something about them, all right? Okay. It's too hard. Um, just a master. Nice. Uh, Don Murray. Beautiful and uh, very bitchy, but in a character way. In oh, okay. Character. <laughs> okay. Not in real life. Not in real life. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. She's a good woman. No, she's a good woman. Thank you for I the justification. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hulk Hogan. Uh, truly an icon. Justin Thunder Liger. Change the business. And for ending, just incredible. Yourself. A kid from Connecticut who got to live his dream. Wow. Yeah. I'm totally eager about that. And uh, for ending, as usual, my partner, Benoit, a.k.a. Nostradamus Ben, it's all about the French prophet. Uh, that, that's why you have uh, his nickname. Oh, yeah. And nice. uh, he tried to predict the future of our guests. Go ahead, my friend. Okay, first of all, uh, Peter, thank you so much for the interview. It was a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sorry it took us so long to connect. No problem. No, no problem. problem. Don't worry. Life is you guys are awesome. Friend. And I, I really, you know, I appreciate your kindness. No problem. Okay, I, I predict to you maybe a reunion uh, for one night only, a reunion of Impact players with Landstorm and Don Marie, of course. I would love it. I would love it. I'm 50 years old. I still have a couple more in me. So let's go. With, with Butch did on the uh, on the future, so yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah. get it out thank there. You, thank you so much for your time, and um, we were with uh, the ECW original uh, Justin Credible, thank aka you guys so much. Um, the Portuguese Man of War, Aldo Montoya. Thank you so much for your time, and have a great day, my friend. Goodbye. You thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Okay.